start to live so Hey, how's it going, you guys? It's Kimmy Speaks, and this is vlog 14. Today is Thursday, January 28th, 2010. I'm so glad to be with you guys today and uh, sharing some stuff, of course. Hope you've been praying for Haiti. Um, I think on the news I saw today, miraculous. Oh my gosh, I think it was today. Um, they rescued uh, this young, ch uh, young child from the from buried underneath the rubble in Haiti, and um, 15 days after the devastation, and she was still alive. You know, moments from death. She, they said, but uh, God is good, right? God is good. Alrighty, y'all. Uh. Um, let us see. I have something I want to share with you guys, a reading today, and uh, let me just get that for you. Sorry, my desk is like full of books and everything, so, you know, semester. Um, and basically, I want to share this with you because um, I feel like a lot of times in, in, our, in just life in general, we're always running. Like, you know, we're always, we're always busy, very busy, and then trying to do things faster, you know, get your education faster, get your degree faster, you know, get your, you know, get to your retirement faster, you know, make the money faster, all these different things, you know, start family faster, all types of things. Um, we're trying to do things fast, pretty much. And so when we mix speed into our faith, I don't think those two go together. Um, and, and here's a passage I want to read quote I want to read to you from Messy Spirituality by Mike Iaconelli. I shared uh, a quote out of this book a couple of sessions ago, a couple of vlogs ago. And so um, here's what it says. Um, Most of us don't come home at night staggering drunk. Instead, we come home staggering tired, worn out, exhausted, and drained because we live too fast. Speed is not neutral. Fast living used to mean a life of debauchery. Now it just means fast. But the consequences are even more serious. Speeding through life endangers our relationships and our souls. Voices surround us, always telling us to move faster. It may be our boss, our pastor, our parents, our wives, our husbands, our politicians, or sadly, even ourselves. So we comply. We increase the speed. We live life in the fast lane because we have no slow lanes anymore. Every lane is fast. And the only comfort our culture can offer is more lanes and increased speed limits. The result? Too many of us are running as fast as we can. An alarming number of us are running much faster than we can sustain. Speed damages our souls because living fast consumes every ounce of our energy. Speed has a deafening roar that drowns out the whispering voices of our souls and leaves Jesus as a dis diminishing speck in the rear view mirror. Spiritual growth is not running faster, as in more meetings, more Bible studies, and more prayer meetings. Spiritual growth happens when we slow our activity down. If we want to meet Jesus, we can't do it on the run. If we want to stay on the road of faith, we have to hit the brakes, pull over to a rest area, and stop. Christianity is not about inviting Jesus to speed through life with us. It's about noticing Jesus sitting at the rest stop. Uh, that quote was on page 96 of Mike Iaconelli's Messy Spirituality. And I, I find it very true. Um, last semester, um, my first two semesters at school, I was pretty much speeding through life in a sense. And I wasn't taking the time necessary to just slow down. And, and, and I knew that I was going at a ridiculous speed. I, I felt that I was going at a ridiculous pace. And instead of um, slowing down and saying, okay, I know I'm going too fast, let me slow down and, and reflect on my faith, reflect on what's going on in my life, I didn't. And so I crashed, which inevitably happens when we are speeding too fast. You know, you can't catch up, and so you end up crashing. And um, 
So yesterday, I told you guys I would read John chapter 15 verses 18 through uh, the end of the text. I told you I'd read it in a different translation because it was so rich. The text was so rich. And um, let me read that for you. John 15. Don't hate on the message version. It, it's cool. It does what it, what it, what it does. All right. Here's what it says. If you find the godless world is hating you, remember it got its start hating me. If you lived on the world's terms, the world would love you as one of its own. But since I picked you to live on God's terms and no longer on the world world's terms, the world is going to hate you. When that happens, remember this. Servants don't get better treatment than their masters. If they beat on me, they will certainly beat on you. If they did what I told them, they will do what you tell them. They are going to do all these things to you because of the way they treated me, because they don't know the one who sent me. If I hadn't come and told them all in this plain language, it wouldn't be so bad. As it is, they have no excuse. Hate me, hate my father, it's all the same. If I hadn't done what I had have done among them, works no one has ever done, they wouldn't be to blame. But they saw the God signs and hated anyway, both me and my father. Interesting. They have verified the truth of their own scriptures where it is written, they hating me for no good reason. When the friend I plan to send you from the father comes, the spirit of truth issuing from the father, he will confirm everything about me. You, too, from your side must give your confirming evidence since you are in this with me from the start. So, um, that's the message version. I'm going to read it uh, again tomorrow. And tomorrow I'm going to read it in the New Living Translation. And then after that we'll move on in the text. And so we've been listening to Brooklyn Tabernacles. Declare your name. And um, let me pull that up for you. So we'll listen to the next track. And, uh, of course I'm not prepared, but um, we're going to do all right. I hope you all are doing well, of course, and have been, um, blessed by this. And, um, I'm still praying for Haiti. And like I said before, if you have any prayer requests or anything like that, just leave it down down in the comment section. Even those who are following this on Facebook, you know, praise reports, anything like that, definitely share it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Alrighty. And so the next track is um, New Jerusalem. We have more. We have four more tracks until the end of this album, so that'll be the, la the next four sessions. And um, I don't know what happens then. So if you guys have any album ideas, leave it down there, comment section, and I might review it. Alrighty. So uh, the next song is um, New Jerusalem, and here it is. Let's take a listen. celebratory and very dramatic I like that alrighty you guys I'm hitting my time limit again and so hope you guys have a good day a good good evening or a good morning or whenever you're watching this video and um, be praying for you keep me in prayer as well and I'll see you guys later later Let me speak.